Hey guys, and welcome back to the second video in my programming uh, problem solving series. And in today's video, we're moving into a bit more of a complex uh, problem. So the last video I did, uh, we had a decent problem. It wasn't too hard. It wasn't too difficult. Um, it's fairly straightforward and fairly simple. If you guys are new to programming and you're new to solving problems, I'd recommend you go watch that one first. I'll leave a card up in the top right hand corner and I kind of give a little intro and go over what the series is about if you're wondering about that. So let's just get right into this problem today. Um, this one is called magic squares. Now, pretty much what this uh, is, is we, I'll just read it out to you. The introduction, a magic square is a 2D matrix composed of n to the power of 2 or n squared integers where n is the length of one row or one column. And in a magic square, each row, each column, and two and the two diagonals must sum to the same value. So we'll look at the example below here, and you can see we have a square. We have 2, 9, 4, 7, 5, 3, 6, 1, 8, um, and all of them sum to 15. So the diagonals here and so on, they all sum to 15. So how can we figure out if a uh, square is a magic square and that's what the problem says here so it says given a 2d matrix which is the same thing as this right here uh, in the same form as shown and as mentioned above uh, your program must determine if the square is magic or not magic it will output magic or not magic accordingly so your program will first take an input n representing the length of one row of the matrix it will then take n lines with input containing n integers separated by spaces and then if we look below, I have my sample input and output that I've written here for you guys. Obviously, this first one is pretty straightforward. Just to show you the obviousness of this first case, uh, if all of the numbers are the same, then obviously the square is going to be magic because no matter where you add, uh, where you sum all of the things, they're all going to equal four or so what am I saying? Six in this case. Um, and you can see if you didn't quite understand the input line here, what's first going to happen is your program is going to take one line here, which is going to tell you how long one row is and how many rows there are. So it tells you three, three rows, and then in each row you have three uh, elements, right? So this next one is a more complex case. You can see we have uh, a length of four. So this square is indeed magic. It might not look like it and it's hard to tell. And that's why we write programs to determine this. So when you guys are testing out your program, make sure you test out uh, different, all these different test cases. So I have these two that are magic. I also have another one here that's not magic. I just made these numbers up um, and wrote them in here. So if you guys just make up your own numbers and type them in, um, then you can also test if those are not magic squares. So yeah, uh, I'll give you a second here to pause the video. If you guys want the actual sheet here that I have, then I have actually shared a Google Drive with you in the description down below. I forgot to mention this in my last video, but if you go to the description, uh, it'll say my solutions or my uh, answers or whatever, click on the link there. It should bring you to a Google Drive, and then on that Google Drive, you can see the uh, uh, the folder I have. Go to the according problem, so it'll say magic squares, and then you'll be able to see this and my Python files with the solution as well. So I'll scroll through it here so you guys can have a look. Uh, pause the video when you feel like it, and go ahead and try the problem. Again, this is uh, slightly more advanced, so I'd say it's probably about a novice problem. And it should take you about 15 to 20 minutes to complete, maybe a bit longer. Okay, so I hope you guys have had a chance now to complete the, uh, the program. Hopefully you were able to get it working. If you've noticed, it's not too difficult to actually code this. It just is slightly tedious and it takes a few steps. So let's get into the solution now. Okay, so the solution. So I have already here in Python uh, my solution. So the first part of the problem is understanding how it works. Um, so this one wasn't too complicated. We have a square uh, and we just have to figure out all the numbers. Do they add to the same thing? So the first part actually after we figure out, so I guess the second part is now taking the input. And you'll notice as I introduce more problems, the input for them is going to become a little slightly more complex. And even just taking the input for the problems is going to be something that you have to figure out uh, yourself. So here we said n is equal to the int of input. So I'll just show you when I run the program. All I have here, I don't have any prompts. It just all you do is you type a number and then you're prompted to type uh, the next row of numbers accordingly, um, like so, I mean, and yeah, and then it will output whatever. Obviously, that didn't work because I didn't type the right amount. Um, anyways, we then set up a new array, uh, or I guess list in Python. I'm calling this a matrix, 
and then I'm saying for rows in range n. So we take however many rows there's going to be, and then for all of those rows, we're then going to take all those numbers uh, on each line. So we say nums are equal to the input of that line. Uh, again, this is going to happen, say, if we had four rows, this will happen four times. And then we append all of those numbers into uh, a list, into a two-dimensional list. So we actually end up having a matrix that, matrix that looks something like this. And it has a bunch of lists inside of it. And that's called a two-dimensional array or two-dimensional list. And that's the way that I like to set up the problem, just so that I can kind of visualize it as well. And that's each one of these would represent one one row. So if we had one, 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 uh, one, 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 this would be a magic square uh, with three rows and uh, three elements in each row. All right, so three columns. And you can see that if we were to add all these together, then we would get three for all of them and it would all work out like that. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this now, but that was just an example to show you. So that's what that that's what this line is doing here. It's just pretty much setting it up into a two dimensional array. And then I've just written a comment here saying we can take a three step approach. So there are three things that uh, the square has to satisfy, right? So the rows must add to each other, the columns must add to each other, and the diagonals must add as well. So uh, let's check all three of those things individually. Um, you can do them all in one big step but I prefer just to do them individually. It keeps the program cleaner and it's easier to read, especially for you guys. So I first just start off by setting a variable called magic. Now what this is gonna do is we're just gonna set this to false the second we find that the square is no, is no longer magic. Because once we find that it's not magic, there's no uh, point in continuing, we can just set it to false right away. So now what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new matrix and this is called uh, C matrix. So this might seem a little confusing at this point, but pretty much we have a two dimensional list up here, which I'm calling matrix that has all of our rows and columns. It looks exactly like this. If you were to print it out onto the screen, that's what it would look like um, your magic square. And then here I'm setting up uh, a column matrix. Now what I'm doing is I'm just adding a new uh, level into the array, a new dimension into the list, uh, according how many rows we have, how many columns we have. And then after this, I'm just grabbing the value that we want to check. So because we know that all of the columns and all of the rows need to add up to the same value, we can just pick any uh, column, any row that we want um, and just get the sum of it and say, well, we need to make sure that everything equals that value. So that's why I've just picked the sum of matrix zero. So this is row zero. Uh, that's the sum of it. And then we start by checking the rows. So here I have a new for loop, say, for x row in enumerate matrix. If you don't know what enumerate does, it pretty much allows you to have a counter variable and a variable that has the actual value um, in the matrix. So it's really useful to use that. Um, so we say, if the sum of our row, which is gonna be equal to obviously the row, uh, does not equal to value, which is one we've checked up here, then we're just gonna instantly say magic equal to false. That's it, we're done. We don't need to do anything else. Um, and we know the square is no longer magic. So we check all of the rows. Now say that they are, uh, uh, they do all add to the same thing. Well, now what we need to end up to do is we need to set up our column matrix. So the first matrix I set up has the rows in it. Now we want ones with the columns in it so that we're able to add all of the columns up together. So we're going across adding that, and now we want to add down. So I just do this in the same step as I'm checking the rows because it makes sense to do it in the same for loop rather than setting up a new one. Again, I'm saying for y comma element in enumerate row. So for every element in our row, uh, I'm going to add that element into the corresponding matrix for the column. So into uh, so for each row, I'm going to have a different dimension that each element goes into. So for example, this is this one. If we're on zero zero right now. Uh, we're going to go into the first uh, first column, and this is the first element in the first column. And then we continue on, and then the second element, well, that's going to be in the second column. The third element in the row, that's going to be in the third column. And then once we go down to the second row, so now we're on row two, then we put this, this is the second element in the uh, first column, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now that we've set up our column matrix, we go ahead and we can check our columns. So now that we have them, we can do the exact same thing we did up here, except instead of using rows, we're using columns and we're using the other matrix. And we're just gonna say, well, if these columns, if they don't sum up to the value that we've set at the beginning here, 
then we know it's not magic, so we'll set magic equal to false. Okay, so this that part was fairly straightforward. I know I went kind of fast through it, um, but what we do here now is a little more complicated, and this is with diagonals. So I'm just setting up two variables to start here, i and j. Now i equals zero, j equals zero. Um, this is gonna correspond, this is row, and this is column, okay? So I've just set up now a little diagonal uh, two-dimensional list as well. And this is going to have the diagonal on the left side and the diagonal on the right side. And the reason I can do this rather than having to set it up uh, variable wise like I have up here is because I know that no matter how big this square is, we're only going to have two diagonals uh, corner to corner. So it's fine to do it like this. Uh, now I'm saying for X in range N. So for the amount of elements or the amount of rows, so on, um, we're going to say diagonal zero. So the left side. And we're going to add matrix I and matrix J. Now, what this does is since we're starting at 0, 0, it's going to add 0, 0. And I'm just going to pull up this actually because it's going to make it a bit easier to understand. So we're going to have 0, 0 here, which is going to be 2. And then from the right side, we're going to say N minus 1 minus I. Now, what this does is it we're on the same row. So if I get back here, we're on the same row. We're still here uh, in the same J uh, J value but we need to go uh we need to go back because right now we're here we want to get to six so how do we do that the way we do that is we say well we know that there's three elements in here if we're currently at zero um then we need to first subtract one because obviously there's not a third uh what do you call them here it's only uh it only goes up to two if we're counting like uh programmers which we are so we say n minus one, now we're at two, and two minus i, since i is zero, that plops us over to here where six is, so that we can get the other uh, diagonal value. Now, after we do that, we're gonna add one to both of these values. So you can see that over here, we add one to both of them. So that means we're now moving down, and we're moving to the right. So I've, I've started at zero, zero, I'm now going down one to the right, where I get five. And same thing from this side, I'm here, starting at that so now that our i value has gone up by one and we've subtracted one from it um minus from n or whatever and now we're back in the middle as well and then we move down one more time so for here we move down and then we move to the right for this one here and then here we're moving to the left so we're moving down and we're moving to the left so we can get that value and we just stored them in this diagonals uh two-dimensional list here and then we're just checking with a simple if statement here if diagonal is zero uh, does not equal value or the sum of diagonals one does not equal value magic equals false and finally the conclusion if magic after all of this checking still equals true we haven't found any contradictions uh, in the sums then we print magic otherwise we print not magic and yes that is my solution now i know this is a little little bit harder but these are good problems to start thinking about this one is just more tedious than it is difficult um, and in the next video we're going to get into one that's maybe not as long uh, but it's going to require a bit more thinking so i'm going to go ahead and run my program now and prove to you guys that it does indeed work um, so first we'll start with a very basic case like that two 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 like that we get a magic square run the program again i'm going to put some random numbers in here this time do three four five three two four five three four five not magic now if i pull up my uh output here this four one the one that you guys should be checking as well pull it up again uh how can i get this so it's on the screen i have to push it all the way over okay and let's make this a bit smaller there we are gonna start by typing 4 and then 16 2 3 13 5 11 10 8 9 7 6 12 and 4 14 15 1 and we get magic so we can confirm that this program is indeed working um, and if you guys, again, have any other better way of doing this, you found a more efficient solution, make sure you either send me a link in the comments below or just post your code down there. I'll have a look at it. And if it is indeed faster than mine, then I'll be sure to shout you guys out in the next video. So that's been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and make sure you're around every Thursday for new uh, programming problems.